sign at the side of the road that says 15 miles to the Galen, I got bad news for you. Uh-oh, what's going on? I don't know if you heard the news this week, but uh, the Pokemon company is trying to track down the identities of the Sword and Shield leakers. And that's you. But how do, how do they know? How, how could they possibly figure it out? I mean, I wrote everything down. I, I only used paper. I didn't write anything digital. I mean, it... It, it's, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. No. Okay, well, no. that's a b- bald-faced lie. The lie detector determined that's a lie because apparently there's some Discord nonsense going on or whatever. That's how they're figuring it out. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do now that these allegations are put against you? Well, as you especially know, but so do our listeners, um, I don't use Discord. So I'm in the clear, personally. <laughs> <laughs> that's a strong defense. It is a very strong defense. Basically, I just have to lean back in my chair and just hold up my hand to go, meh. I disagree, though. I feel like they're going to find you no matter what. The Pokemon legal company be like, gotta cut them all. <laughs> Please tell me this entire buildup was just so you could use that joke, because that's terrific. <laughs> no, I, I thought about it earlier, and I was like, well, that's lame to end on. We can do that. So perfect for us. <laughs> Hello, my price droppers and discount darlings. Friends, thank you for joining us today on the Nintendo Everything Podcast, episode 56. My name is Oni Dino, and with me, I have a bargain bin party game. Fun for the whole family. It's Galen. It's like one of those imagine wedding designers or imagine like cooking chefs. This is imagine uh, podcast co-host. Imagine podcast co-hosts, and it's just as terrible as it sounds. Uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so what would be your motion control gimmick for your Imagine podcast host party game? Very obviously, it'd be a lot of connect the dot lines. Um, there would also be coloring, because you got to have coloring. There would also be a lot of like... So I imagine a lot of insults being flown at me, and you have to blow on the screen to try to blow them away, but it's ultimately useless, like some of them kind of get through. I'm never going to play that game. <laughs> I never said it was a good game, Also, but someone's got to play it. <laughs> coloring and connecting the dots, what do you think a podcast host does? Is this why you are the you way you think, are? What do you think an Imagine game essentially is have you ever played any of those things they are terrible no goatee <laughs> 2006 okay imagine party babies <laughs> you you would sit in a little baby pool of water like one inch thick thick deep and, and you would splash <laughs> the little toys that floated towards you towards you and that's how you got points so wait are you are you in a pool of babies I mean, yes, but not in the way you're thinking. It's what? not in lieu of liquid there are babies, and you're just like... It's not like a ball pit, and in lieu of balls there are babies. You're in a, a baby pool, which is like a tiny pool, a shallow pool, okay? And then there's a couple of babies in there, and you're one of them. And it's a party! I really just want one of the mini games just to be a uh, pool full of babies now. Just play Death Stranding. (laughs) So, everybody, thank you for joining us this week. For all of our new listeners, we are a weekly show. Episodes go live every Sunday, bright and early, if you happen to be in the States. We are on all of the platform... Wait, no. We are on all of the podcast platforms. iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it, we are there. Mm Mm-hmm. We would super appreciate it if you would take a moment to give us a iTunes or Apple podcast review because the majority of our listeners are on that platform. And so if you rate us, it helps us to get found and recommended through the algorithm gods. So please do that. It is the best way to support us. Galen, what is it? It is the best way to support us. Holy shit, you did it. Hey, it's a Thanksgiving miracle. Oh, God. (laughs) 
By the way, uh, happy Thanksgiving or post Thanksgiving. Happy post Thanksgiving to all of our American uh, uh, listeners and to all of our non American listeners. Happy free healthcare. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I stole that from Joe <laughs> Zija's tweet. Joe Zija's the uh, uh, English voice actor for Claude from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Mm. So you're uh, copying wise words then. Yeah, he's a very clever guy. He's a clever guy. You, you know what? You can go ahead and use any excuse that you want to to follow him uh, more closely than you have. So, <laughs> what, what is this? You've been ta- what, are you, what, are, what are you You've saying? You've been here? talking about Claude a lot. I'm just saying. I like Claude. What are you saying? <laughs> is this an intervention? Are you intervening on me right now? Yes. <laughs> I don't know what for, but that's what this is. <laughs> Claude's great. What are you talking about? Don't even criticize me. You haven't even like played Fire Emblem Three Houses, man. It, like Cl- Cl- Claude. Claude. Okay, was, listen. I did. I did go House of the Golden Sag. No, you're wrong already. Claude what? is an icon. He's a legend, and he is the moment. I mean, come on now. So he is on tier with the Galarian Ponyta. Yes, same tier. All right. All right. I'm I'm glad that we're getting these uh these tears out of the way. So are you ever going to play Fire Emblem 3 Houses again? What what's what's your story there? Uh I mean, I would have picked it up if I could have found it on sale somewhere, but But yeah, too bad it's, it's a Nintendo uh, game and it came out this year. Yeah, seriously. That means no sale. <laughs> no sale. Not not for a while. So you're not going to get it for another 3 years? Well, no, not necessarily. I'm just saying that I've got other games at the moment that I'm going to be going through. Fire Emblem is a good game. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I can justify that I can't rent it again because I just realized I'd be wasting money instead of putting it towards a product that I am enjoying. I expect all of you to chastise him for not having purchased Fire Emblem yet. (laughs) So let's move on to our adventure log. This is the Adventure Log segment where we talk about the video games we've been playing this week. Just before we do, Galen, where can they find you on the socials? If they want to find me on socials, send me a message on Twitter at Mobius087. Or you can follow me on the Instagram at True underscore Mobius. And I've got pictures of my pets, got some Thanksgiving pictures that I'm going to be posting up. It's pretty fun. Fun for me. <laughs> I, I mean, was, when you think about it, is Instagram really fun for anyone else? I, I don't know. I consider it like basically a marketing thing, like almost the entire time. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Instagram exhausts me. Hey, find me exhausted on Instagram at Oni <laughs> underscore underscore Dino for the Instagram. And then you can talk to me about games on the Twitter. That's Oni underscore Dino. And then I also have a YouTube that I casually play video games with my husband that is called Game Married, G-A-Y-M-E, Married. Mm-hmm. It's pretty entertaining. I haven't seen uh, the Super Monkey Ball episode that you just po- posted up. I haven't got the chance to watch that one yet. It did just come out. <laughs> I'm still waiting for you guys to play more Luigi's Mansion 3. We will be. We will be. Good, 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 good. The Monkey Ball episode has lots of shouting and screaming in it, so mm, if you're into that... <laughs> I, I would be very surprised if it didn't, because I'm familiar with that game, and I know how excitable the two of you can get sometimes, so... You're calling me excitable! I am not excitable! You are incredibly excitable! He said, excitably. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and this is, like, monotone compared to you sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, I have the actual footage of when the two of you played uh, Never Give Up, so I have proof. I have proof on my side. <laughs> so, Galen, why don't you tell me about your experiences crawling through a creepy mansion? Tell me about what a mansion it is in Bloodstained. Ritual <laughs> of the Night. Yeah, so uh, I wish I could, but I haven't actually gotten to the mansion yet. <laughs> um, what? Yeah, so I, well, and I picked up Bloodstained Ritual of the Night on sale. Um, is this for Switch? Yeah, I got it for the Switch. Okay. Uh, got it for a pretty good sale. Like, I happened to have a coupon at the place that I bought it from during the time, so I basically got the game for free. I was really happy about that. Ooh. So, for those who are not aware of the game, it is a Castlevania... Uh, not dungeon crawler. It's definitely a Castlevania-style game. Mm-hmm. 
you actually start off on a boat in the tutorial level and then once you get off the boat you go through a, uh, a village and then you get to the mansion itself um, between when I picked the game up and uh, with the holidays and everything I haven't actually gotten to the mansion per se but I am off the boat I did beat that I did beat my first boss games a lot of fun game is a lot of fun okay so one of the things that i really like about it is it's very true to that castlevania style so if you like exploring an area if you like the precision that you need while fighting enemies all that's there it is right on par with what you would expect out of that kind of a game mm. and we should maybe mention also that this is made by koji igarashi who yeah made Castlevania Symphony of the Night and then, you know, popularized that that second coming of Castlevania that changed it from classic style Castlevania game design to Symphony of the Night Metroidvania Castlevania. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the game came out back in June. There was a lot of kind of like controversy about the game like not performing well. There were bugs in it. I haven't come across any of those myself, but it's also been a couple of months, so there were patches and updates that have come out since then. So Yeah, recently they did do a big patch in I want to say November, and then they have another one planned in December for something. So Yeah. So far your experience though, like with controls and stuff like that, that's all good? Yeah, yeah, it seems pre pretty smooth and pretty uh, reactive to what I want to do. Okay. Uh, my one complaint about it is that I do feel like it is a little bit slow as far as moving your character around. And that could be very intentional. Mm. Um, I don't know if there is a way to, like, as you level up your character, there's more... Uh, you can delve more into the speed of it. But there are some times that I'm moving my character around and... it. The best way I can describe it is it feels like your character's on a treadmill. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know what I mean where they've got like they've got that walking animation and they're moving forward and it kind of syncs up to the speed but just ever so slightly slower. Ah, like, I know what you mean now. Okay. You it know doesn't that, feel like they're actually taking here. steps, right? Yeah, it's your character is moving and they're just making the moving animation along with it. Ah, uh, that really bothers me in games. Damn it. Yeah. And I bought this yeah. game too. I haven't played it yet. It's it's very subtle. It's very subtle. Uh, but I'm, I'm really sensitive to that, so I'm worried now. Yeah, it's just, I just wish that it was sped up just a little bit more. And that just might be my own personal preference. Like, when it comes to action games, I remember playing Rogue Legacy or uh, even just like uh, sh switching genres a little bit, like Devil May Cry, for example. There There's a, there's a speed to the precision and the action that goes along with it. And where this one, that precision is definitely there that you need to have in order to excel at the game, but it just, it, it feels just a little bit slow when I'm moving my character around. Gotcha. So if maybe you could use like the ZL or ZR button, then you could pull your speed walk trigger? <laughs> that would definitely be nice. <laughs> um, ah, I did it. I, I went I, there. Oh. Yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I will definitely say, though, uh, they do have a like a backstep option on there that I'm still trying to get used to because it the controls are initially placed in a weird way. And I'm not quite sure if this is something that I want to adjust or not or just kind of get used to. OK, like you have the ability to use magic and you have different spells assigned to different buttons. One of them is your projectile spell, which you start off with a, as a fireball. It's got kind of like a twin stick shooter mentality where you aim with the right stick and where you're aiming is where you hold out your hand uh, and then you fire with the trigger. Okay. But by doing that, you also you you limit the ability to like jump at the same exact time. Oh, okay. And you can do it, but you've got to contort your hand into some weird way in order to make both of that work. Oh, uh, what's so your jump like, button? Uh, your jump button is B. Ah, uh, because you can't touch the face buttons while using the, the stick at the same time. Correctly. Er, <laughs> correctly? Wow. <laughs> exactly. It shows a little bit because there's actually a range on the fireball. Like, it explodes and it kind of dissipates after a certain time before it hits the end of the screen. So, it, when you're on the boat, on the deck, there's this harpy that's flying around. Mm -hmm. Which, okay, awesome. I'll use my projectile and shoot it. But it... it 
just seems to explode, like, just out of reach for her. Oh, so you need to jump and then do it. Yeah, jump and then do it, or just go ahead and keep on aiming. Use your one of your fingers to jump at the same time, and then using your third finger, just go ahead. Like, it, it's definitely could use some tweaking around. If I can remap the buttons, it might be a little bit easier. Is there an option to remap the buttons? Uh, I'm actually not sure because I, mm. when I come across this kind of a problem, I always want to give the game the benefit of the doubt and try it for a little bit longer to see if, okay, this does actually make sense. Uh-huh. And this is just one projectile. Like there might be more in the game Definitely. that kind of gets, that gets past this. But yeah, haven't, haven't acro- come across that just yet, but I'm in the tutorial level. So I'll definitely find out <laughs> if it's, if it gets a little bit better. Gotcha. What is better, though, is the voice acting in this game. Oh, yeah? Because, yeah, like, I, so it's definitely an acquired taste. I think you would eat it up. Absolutely. Is it like Uber it, Camp? Yeah, it's got that, like, anime camp along with it. But you can tell that the voice actors that they got to actually do everything they definitely put themselves into this. It is not like, okay, this is cheesy. I'm just doing this for a paycheck. Uh-huh. Uh, you can definitely feel like there are, there's a good range of emotions into what they're doing. And the quote unquote campiness of it is partly how it was written, which I consider style taste more than anything mm-hmm. and uh, how it was directed. So I, I, I'm definitely enjoying this quite a bit. Awesome. That makes me really excited for the game, like more than like anything that you've said so far. Uh, I love yeah. good, <laughs> just campy, having fun voice acting. Yeah. Like there, there's a scene uh, during, I can't remember if it's at the beginning, right before the boat gets attacked or if it's during it, but you're talking to one of your, uh, your few companions that you actually have on your side in the game. Mm-hmm. And... Like something shook the boat or something, and they both gave a like uh, a surprised noise. Which in the text, it's just explanation point. That's it. Yeah. But uh, they have sound effects for the characters. So mm. you have uh, Miriam, your main character, who goes, oh! <laughs> and then and then the the other guy who I can't remember his name for the life of me, he goes, oh! <laughs> and he makes that noise. But it's timed that you have to go to each dialogue separately. <laughs> oh, uh, that's so it's like that's a little shaking, annoying. But you that's press fine. the button, you go to it, you hear her, <gasps> and then you press it again and it goes to. Ah! <laughs> it's just it's completely disjointed. Yeah, a little bit campy, and I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Overall, the game's really entertaining, and I'm I'm glad that I didn't try the game when it first came out i'm glad that i'm glad that i gave it a little bit of time to like work through the kinks and everything very grad before very grad uh before like my first experience with the game was sullied by initial launch day bugs yeah yeah uh so yeah i definitely think i'm going to be playing this one a little bit more going forward because it, it's got it's definitely got my intention and i love the metroidvania style I don't mm-hmm. play as many of those games as I wish I could. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'll finish this one? Oh, probably. The last game in this genre that I remember playing was Hollow Knight. And I got a decent way through that game. I haven't finished that one. Mm. But the one before that was Rogue Legacy. And I just absolutely adored that game. I played that game to death. Wasn't Rogue Legacy a... What's that called? Uh, Rogue Light? Yeah, it was a it was a rogue rogue light game, and you would go through. But in the same kind of style, it was it was an action platformer that you were exploring around in an area. Hmm. So you know what you should check out though is the prequel game to this, Bloodstained: Curse of the Moon. Hmm. I've had my eye on that one actually. It's on sale right now. You should get it. I bought it <laughs> a while ago, and I could not believe how much I loved it. It's classic. Class, uh, Castlevania style, so it's not mm-hmm. the Metroidvania, but uh, I loved it more than any castle classic Castlevania game that I've ever played before. And it's okay. a prequel, so like you can play the game so many different times over, and like you can choose all four characters or only one character, or whatever. And I'm I'm excited to go back to that game and revisit it too. Hmm. Okay. So buy it. 
Uh, okay. Pressuring you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we saw how well that worked with Fire Emblem, so... Well, that's... Unfortunate. <laughs> Unfortunate. Unfortunate is the word that I would use to describe this situation, Galen, yeah. But... Yeah. Speaking of conversations we've had before... <laughs> <laughs> What have shut you been up. playing lately? <laughs> shut up. I've been playing Shut Up. Ah, you're a master at that game. No. What? Anyway, I've been playing some Atelier Rises still. <laughs> I haven't gotten too much gaming in this week just because I've been hitting the books, been doing a lot of stuff lately. So yeah. just been playing this a little bit at night right before I go to bed. This game continues to surprise me. Mm -hmm. It has so many systems it's still introducing new systems to me and it's not feeling overwhelming it definitely feels like the 90th entry in this series which it basically yeah. is <laughs> what is what is one of the new uh systems that they've introduced into the game that you're currently trying to get used to there's these slime characters called uh punies or punies and they now just have one at my house but he's a friendly one and now I can feed him and then he goes out and based on what I feed him he goes out and he scavenges raw materials for me and brings him back oh you have a pet yeah that's awesome I love games that do that but where it's really surprising me is the story the writing for the characters is so good like I don't know, I guess because I didn't go into this game with many expectations, I was just like, this looks pretty, and the battle system looks fun, and you know what, this this looks like the game for me to jump into on this series, because you know, I've been kind of interested in this series before. Mm -hmm. But the writing is so much better than I thought it was going to be at all. There's all of these little miniature character arcs that your characters go through. For example, one that I just went through is this alchemist who's a traveling alchemist comes to your town. His name is Ampel. And mm -hmm. he, one of his arms was, uh, to keep a long story short, like broken or damaged and he can't really use it very well. So therefore he can't do, um, alchemy and stuff like he wants to. He can only, he's only operating at 40% or something basically. So mm -hmm. you as Ryza eventually get better as an alchemist and then you use some raw materials and technology from an old group of people who historically did like a ton of really awful things. So Ryza makes a prosthetic arm or hand or whatever for Ampel using this technology. And he's like, no, I, I can't accept this because of, you know, where this is coming from. And Ampel's partner, her name is Leela. She tries to get through to him as he's resistant to accepting it. And it also does a great job of making this be, you know, a dual purpose. The dual purpose being that it's also a good, um, like, it's good character in world world building, but uh, it also delivers expository dialogue for the audience, too. So she's hmm. trying to tell him, like, no, you can accept this because this is not coming from that place. This is coming from your uh, men mentee. Is that the right word? Mentor and... Pupil? pupil it is coming from your yeah. pupil and this is coming from a place of love and it's not coming from that that horrible place that you fear so you don't have to worry about it and there's a lot of like really great little subtext in there for like repurposing concepts and feelings acceptance moving on not holding grudges there's just a lot of little things that you can interpret differently from like just that one little character arc and there's those kinds of things all over the place and i'm just just impressed by the writing because I didn't expect it to be this good. Hmm. The way that you have described it to me, it, I am incredibly happy to hear that the story has remained engaging this entire time. Yeah, totally. And you yeah. know, the, the main story is interesting and there's like stuff going on with it, but I'm just mostly loving the character interactions and the way that the characters grow in, in relation or in parallel to the story. Mm hmm. And this definitely seems to be a story that is more character focused, more than it is world world focused. Like, you have some games that you need to have a balance between statement that you want to make on the world and statement that you want to make uh, as far as character development and how we are as people and you know the 
possible avenues of growth that a person can go through. That's mm-hmm. why stories exist. So it's always a a balancing act as to what parts you put in there to cook up what a story is. Yeah. Uh, it, it definitely sounds that this is more character focused, but I like the little elements that you were talking about with the... Um, that element of world building really does kind of put a spice onto the entire story itself. And really good stories know how to flavor it in such a way that there's a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah, and you know, it is certainly character focused, but they do a great job of also establishing the world because like you're on your your small island and they talk about like the mainlands and they talk about being secluded for, or not secluded but separated from them and they talk about you mm-hmm. know how things go on over there and so they're establishing this world in a great way but they're like but that's not your story your story is here on this island and this is you know the small little thing that you're dealing with and mm-hmm. i mean it's not a small little thing with the story the overarching story is becoming bigger and bigger i don't want to say any spoilers or anything like that so that's yeah, cool yeah yeah but Um, I mean, for example, you're on this small island and then this trader comes through and he's trying to establish new trade routes. I don't remember if I said this before on the podcast many moons ago, but anyway, he's establishing this new trade route because you have a fruit on the island called the Kirken fruit and it's unique to that island and he wants to establish that route so that way you can bring more money in and, you know, he would uh, benefit from the route as well because he's establishing it. Then later on in the story, like that kind of goes through, but like in the background, like you as Riza, as this, you know, 15 year old, um, you're not a part of it. Right. So it just kind of mm-hmm. happens in the background. But then you have some other people, NPCs that come into the town and they're like, oh, yeah, ever since like that trade route got established, um, we've heard more about your island now. And like we heard that there's a really good dessert over here. And then that becomes a side quest. And it's just little things like that that I'm like, wow, this is. You know, good job. Good job making everything be a web. Good. good because good. it's so easy to not do that. And it's such a small little detail that it's easy to overlook those things or not include them. But like people like me who just really enjoy good storytelling in RPGs, we super appreciate that kind of stuff. Mm hmm. And it's always a risk as to, especially in a video game format, when you are putting in those like subtle details as to like, what what is it that is going to be appealing enough that the player would want to invest into exploring those yeah yeah like i mean there's all these you know small character arcs that have happened so far in this game and i don't even think i'm halfway through the game but <laughs> there was one in particular i wanted to bring up with uh the traveling alchemist and his partner that's ampel and leela there's a part where the town starts to get kind of afraid of them and they think that they're causing trouble. And so mm. Ampel and Leela use the town's misconceptions and fear of them to their advantage and prove themselves as, as not being troubles. Oh God. Prove themselves as <laughs> not being troublemakers like the town's people were suspecting them to be. Uh, that's kind yeah. of the, the simplest way I can put it without like giving out spoilers or anything like that. It's not super spoiler heavy, no. but you know, just, just being yeah, sensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so that in turn teaches Riza a good lesson about social interactions between human beings and between adults. So they have this talk, the three of them, and it sort of teaches her that like sometimes you have to tell white lies or use things to your advantage. And (laughs) Riza, she still has trouble understanding this adult concept because she's a kid. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's just nice little simple little elements like that, that are just good writing. Yeah. I mean, she's she's a kid. I think she's like 15. But meanwhile, she's got the body of a 26-year-old. Well, it's an anime, of course. Yeah. <laughs> she got a booty that claps and she got titties like blah. <laughs> Everything is a trap. That cactus over there, that's a trap. It's ridiculous. <laughs> There's also some uh, very, very slight lesbian undertones to two of the characters, which I'm really loving. And... Being part of, like, the LGBTQ community, our representation in games still sucks, and kind of in media as a whole. So you kind of kind of get what's handed out to you. You know, you get you get the little <laughs> little bits, and you kind of make up your own headcanon for yourself, and you just have a nice little time. <laughs> you will take what you can get. <laughs> yeah. 
So anyway, I mean, it's just like a cute little friendship, but you could also sort of read into it as like, oh, they have like a budding love for each other too. And I love that. It's it's just really sweet and, and cute. Mm -hmm. And if Gust isn't going to make another, you know, Knights of Azure game, which is, you know, full on Lesbos, then I shouldn't say less. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I guess I'll just have to do what I can do with this because I think Knights of Azure 2 did not sell well. Mm. So I don't know. I don't have hope that there's going to be a third one, which is a bummer. Maybe. I mean, fan community and everything like that. Kickstarter is our thing. Yeah. Next time I talk to Keisuke Kikuchi, I'll tell him. <laughs> That'll be my third time talking to him. I, hey, you know, you joke, but... <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't really a joke. I know I'm going to be meeting that man pretty soon. Let me work on Fatal Frame first, then I'll move on to <laughs> Knights of Azure Lesbians. You've got your uh, you've got your priorities set up here. <laughs> I do, yeah. And I guess another element of this uh, game that I haven't really talked about, just because this is such a content-rich game, is uh, the side quests in the game. So in lots of RPGs, there's side quests, and lots of them are fetch quests and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. So, of course, there are fetch quests in this as well, but they do a great thing that I wish more games would do. The side quests are all continuing stories, and there's like maybe five or so different stories. I don't know. I'm not really sure, but they all continue for all of these small supporting characters. And okay. so you do a fetch quest, but it, the next fetch quest plays into that overarching narrative. And mm, okay. so like there's this one girl who's like looking for her prince charming. And so the fetch quest is make some uh, makeup for her, you know, sy via synthesizing. And then another one is yeah. uh, create a cannon so that way she can shoot a message in a bottle out to sea so that way she can find a man. And it's <laughs> as, as you do. Yeah, as you do. You know, we've all been there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what, what is my life? <laughs> <laughs> anyway and so this character even though they're a small supporting character they kind of grow too because then you like you make some makeup for them but then it happens to be like sort of a war paint makeup and then they go out and then they learn how to fight and then they're in these like martial arts classes and then they meet a guy that way and then she's actually the stronger one and then the the guy is the weaker one and it's kind of cute because like she starts out as doing like this sort of damsel in distress thing but then now she's the strong woman hmm Anyway, to forward that that storyline, everything is just a little fetch quest, but it incentivizes you to do that through storytelling. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Like, do that for everything. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Definitely a lot of fun. I just can't believe I'm enjoying this game so much. It's weird. It's just great. Like, yeah. this and Fire Emblem Three Houses were definitely my surprises of this year. And they were both <laughs> developed by Koei Tecmo. I mean, give credit where credit is due. I do. Awesome. I do. I just <laughs> did. Uh, now you got me thinking about side quests and I need to put into my own game. <laughs> Which game? Oh, you mean your your uh, Dungeons and Dagrons? Uh, yes, my Dungeons and Dagrons. Yeah, we, we played another session a couple days ago and went kind of heavy on the, the side quests, actually. I've written one out involving a a poet that has a magical ability that what he writes gets actually brought into life and the muse of his inspiration was the love of his life who ended up dying and so he tried to write this person back into reality and was successful but realized that there were very uh unforeseen side effects that went along with it so now he had to do something in regards to correcting this mistake Okay, so he possesses the the life note. Kind of. <laughs> but this, this is all told through a story that this random bar just came in. Like, he heard the story, he made a song of it, and he just sang it in a pub. And now it's up to the players if they want to actually follow that uh, that path down to figure out what exactly happened. Did you as DM play the part of the bard and sing the song? Uh, um, actually, there is, uh, there's a song from the game Alan Wake that I based the side quest off of. Oh, you're and such found, a nerd. And I found a guy who did an acoustic version of it and had that play in the background while I had them do their regular stuff. Okay, okay. So... 
So this week, not too much news happened, which is totally fine with me, but there are some huge sales happening all over the place, of course, because of the Black Friday craze, and Black mm -hmm. Friday has kind of spread throughout the world, so there's sales all over the internet, but especially we want to talk about some eShop sales that are currently going on this week. Oh yeah. If I'm if I'm right, a lot of these eShop sales are going past like they're going to like mid December or something like that. Or not mid December, but like mid the first week of December. Uh they end on the third of December, I think. And that's still a uh pretty significant uh chunk of time. Are there any games that you have picked up so far or are thinking about picking up? Yeah, I picked up uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I picked that up recently. Um, I also picked up Dragon's Crown for the PS4. Um, I played that game before. It's a lot of fun, and mm -hmm. I'm really excited to play through it again. Yeah, Vanillaware makes really fun games. Yeah. Um, actually, full disclosure, I would love to see you guys play that on Game Married. Like, I think I saw your uh, Dungeons & Dragons uh, beat-em-up one that you guys did. What was the name of that game? Oh, I can't King remember. of Dragons. King of Dragons, yes, yeah. yes. It's it's kind of a very similar style, but there's more of a character building aspect to it, and the art is absolutely ridiculous, which I love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of Vanillaware's bread and butter. Absolutely, everybody has tree trunk thighs, and it's awesome. <laughs> but I would love to see you guys play that game. <laughs> uh, going back to the eShop, uh, I'm thinking about picking up Grandia Remastered, because mm. I've been... I've been very nostalgic for that game lately. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I really want to pick it up and go through it. What What is it currently on sale for? Do you know? Uh, I have to double check. I want to say it's about thirty percent off or something. So it's like thirty bucks as opposed to forty. Mm hmm. Yeah. So ten bucks off. Yeah. That's that's pretty solid. Yeah. And then beyond that, I am going to finally put money where my mouth is, and I'm going to play Anthem. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> well, and it, it's funny because I was debating back back and forth on this one because, like, everywhere I hear it's a crap game. Like, I know it's going to be a crap game, but I've also found it for only ten bucks. So, for the price of a movie ticket, and I, I've got one of my uh, my brother in laws are actually going to be playing it too. So for the price of a movie ticket, if I can have an enjoyable night hanging out with my friend, just laughing at how bad this game is, like I'm, I would consider that a win. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Cause I've heard that like, even down to like UI and the flow of like going between missions into your hub world and everything like that, that even mm -hmm. things like that are really poor. Yeah. With that said though, I do you know that they have done quite a bit of adjustment to this game in the same way like Destiny was not as great as it is now when it first came out, but it they've definitely been evolving this game a little bit, and they do have broader plans on what they want to do with it as well. So this might be a good time to get in with like very little like mm. risk. Mm. And again, good for time 10 to bucks, get into Anthem. <laughs> for 10 bucks if i'm wrong on this i'm not gonna lose any sleep over it yep 10 bucks you could be putting on uh fire emblem three houses <laughs> <laughs> uh that being said there were a couple of there were a couple of like physical copied games that i was thinking about picking up but i refused to go out and actually like hit up stores until at least tomorrow or something <laughs> Um, but one of which was actually Starlinked. Is it Starlinked? Oh yeah, Starlink. Yeah. That's I think ten US dollars at Best Buy. At Best Buy. Yeah. And it's specifically the R Wing one, which I'll be honest, like if I I could see myself putting that up on a shelf or something along with my amiibos or and everything. But uh, I just really don't want to go to the store and pick You can it buy up. it online, just have it shipped to you. I thought about that. Actually, when I last tra uh, checked it, it was going to take like a week and a half to ship. And I'm just like, yeah, but I could just go down the store. But if I do that, that means I have to deal with all. Oh, the my God. Shoppers. Listen to you wearing your own shackles. <laughs> uh, Starlink for 10 bucks is a pretty awesome price, though. 
Yeah, I picked it up recently for 15. There was a sale, I don't know, like a month or two oh. ago. And okay. I honestly, I wanted the digital version because you get more. I, I looked into it. You get more in the digital regular version rather than the digital expansion really? one. Yeah, yeah. And huh. I also don't want this all that junk. I'm looking at it right now. I also don't want all this plastic junk. I already have Amiibo. <laughs> I, I already have too much n- nonsense. I don't want no, more. No, that makes sense. I can't wait to throw this thing in the garbage after I play it. There you go. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> I think you gave me a heads up that a uh, ukulele was on sale at GameStop or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on sale, too. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more that I have my eye on, but w- what have you uh, picked up and what do you plan on and what are you thinking about? <laughs> There's like three parts of this question. Th- no, t- like <laughs> what you do. <laughs> two and a half of those three things that you just said were all the same thing. How? <sighs> Listen back. What? what Listen what back to you, the episode. What have you picked up? What do you want to pick up? No, and you're not repeating you all about? of these things again. I'm cutting it out. Anyway. Uh, I have picked up Ori in the Blind Forest on the Switch. I played nice. the demo, and that was a lot of fun. It's a Metroidvania. It's really pretty. It runs really nice on the Switch. It, no brainer. Total no brainer. Ori in the Blind yeah. Forest is a Metroidvania that was originally Xbox One and like Microsoft, of course, exclusive. And then they announced it to be made for the Switch, the definitive edition. And I don't know yeah. exactly what that means. I don't know what is, what is gonna what, like. Was there DLC? I don't even know. But whatever. I picked I it up for was. like eleven bucks or something like that. Nice. I also picked up Hob, also the definitive edition, on the okay. uh, Switch. I played the oh, the same exact story. I played the demo on this one, and that was a ton of fun. It's like an action adventure game. It's kind of top down, kind of isometric. And you run around and fight enemies and solve puzzles. It seems to be pretty puzzle heavy. Not unlike a Zelda game in terms of uh, structure to the game. So that's right up my alley. Nice. Yeah. Cool. That was also on sale for probably like 11 or 12 bucks or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And I also picked up something that looks super, super good. It's called Fox and Forests on the Switch. Okay. This is a side-scrolling platformer, and it's all in pixel art, but the pixel art is so gorgeous. It looks like, you know, late Super Nintendo era pixel art, and something about it is just so magical looking. And I was like, I have to buy this. This is only five dollars from marked down from twenty bucks. So hmm. I can't wait to try this. Nice. All right. <laughs> and apparently, also, I looked into the game just a little bit just before I bought it. The Switch version. And this is the first time I'm seeing it. I think it came out a while ago. The Switch version sold more than any of the other versions. It sold three times more than PC and four times more than PS4. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, we don't know what those numbers are, but th- that's a big multiplier. <laughs> <laughs> Ultra combo. So I can't wait to try out some of these games. I'm going to hopefully be playing some more video games on Game Married in the near future. After I think after December, I get a little bit more free, I think. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we will definitely see. Uh, do, do you think you're going to go back to a five episode a week schedule anytime soon? Yes, I have some ideas in, in the pipeline. I have to see if this is... Mm, doable though before i announce it i don't want to get ahead of myself don't want to put the cart before the horse no that's fair but there are so many games that are on sale right now that uh, you know everybody should just open up their eShop to whatever region they're in and check out what is going on because i mean <laughs> there's a whole bunch of games that are on sale that i already picked up but i haven't tried out yet like katana zero mm-hmm. bloodstained curse of the moon that i recommended earlier there's so many good games on there yeah, my, my favorite thing was to open up my wish list that I had um, that I've been actually collecting games for a while on and just seeing mm. how many of them had sales going on. Yeah, yeah, that's a great strategy too is just like kind of wish list things and then check your uh, wish list from time to time and see if the, any of those are on sale. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No sale on Castle Crashers though. I was sad about that. Oh, eventually, eventually it'll happen. Eventually, oh yeah. So And even so, I think it's like only what, 15 bucks or something right now? Uh, I don't know. I I don't own it. (laughs) I do want to own it eventually. (laughs) 
and I have to in December hopefully catch up on some games that you know came out this year that I was dying for that I have barely touched mm -hmm. like Damon X Machina and Astral Chain like what the hell why have I not like what's going on in my life <laughs> I think uh, when we do our end of the year award ceremony, I'm going to make an award for a uh, best shelf game where it's a game that you thoroughly enjoy, but you haven't gotten around to playing it nearly as much and it's just sitting on your shelf. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah. If anybody has ideas for what awards we should be giving out, please do write into us with your suggestions. Nintendo everything pod at gmail.com. Yep. Nintendo everything pod at gmail.com. So let's move on to our additional DLC and we'll do some emails. We'll keep this one yeah. a little bit lighter of an episode and then because we're going to have mm -hmm. a super heavy one uh, next week with game awards and stuff going on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, Galen, what do you have to recommend for additional DLC this week? Uh, I have kind of a fun one that I stumbled across because I'm super into D&D &D right now. Oh, <laughs> what else is, is new? Yeah, I know. Seriously. <laughs> What's that? You like anime? <laughs> uh, my suggestion this week is a content creator on YouTube by the name of Ribonator. And he specifically deals in creating different molds for D&D-esque uh, items. The video that I have linked below is actually how to make your own swirling dice set, which is just as it is. It's a uh, how to make various forms of dice, and when you roll them, there's this like swirling, sparkly liquid that's actually on the inside, and it looks really, really cool. It's like shaking up a snow globe. Long story short, he has these like little glass balls that he goes and he does a resin foam or, or resin form around it in a mold. But it was inspiring just because I love videos that deal in that uh, creative aspect to it. Like, I didn't know that there was a resin that hardened by shining a UV light on it, but there is, and that's really cool. Hmm. There's a lot of different things you can do with something like that. So, plus it just kind of gets the whole, you know, creative juices flowing as far as, like, what do you want to do and what do you want to make? And I highly support any sort of crafting endeavors that are out there so huh. check them out it's really cool and hopefully you are you get inspired by it nice the yeah. most creative of fragile balls there you go don't break it <laughs> Oni, what do you got so i am recommending a channel that my friend showed me earlier this week the channel is called tokyo llama and it's so far just maybe like 12 videos or so of this guy who bought a really stately, beautiful uh, house in Japan in Southern Ibaraki, which is not too far from Tokyo. And it's this big, beautiful house that was sort of abandoned and it was in super disrepair. It was abandoned for a while, but it's a gorgeous house and it wasn't even built that long ago. It was built in the late eighties. So it's salvageable. And it, he goes through the whole process of buying it at an auction and he shows off like what it looks like, all of the like trash and everything that's there, cleaning it up, renovating the place, future plans, and something about it is just so fascinating. I can't like take my eyes off of it. So I, I plowed through all of these videos in like, I don't know, <laughs> two days, but they're not even that long. Like most of them are under 10 minutes and there's a couple that are over. But it's just a fascinating watch, and it's, I don't know, I think really cool for people who are just a little bit older, like maybe in their upper 20s, maybe in their 30s or older. And, you know, like when you're yeah. 18, I wouldn't have really cared about this too much. But like when you're older and you're like thinking about like the places that you live, um, it's it's certainly fascinating. Yeah. Also, the name of this channel, that definitely is not what I was expecting it to be. I was expecting it to be the like the adventures of some like llama cafe that they have in tokyo yeah up on its on the second floor of a building because why not <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i i have a feeling that it's like maybe his nickname or something like that i don't know the the guy yeah. is i presume to be um an aussie just because of his accent but he's hmm. he's like at least half japanese and he is married to a japanese lady and they have kids and that's why he bought this house and it's just really interesting, all the different little aspects that he talks about. And 
oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful house. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> you just check it out. Cool. It's super cool. Yeah. Well, and the wife and I definitely like watching like uh, home renovation TV shows in the background and stuff. So maybe I'll give this a watch too. Why can't people get over paint color? We're going to knock down this wall. We're going to make the kitchen a nice open concept. And Oh, God. They actually do that. They actually do that in one of his videos. <laughs> it doesn't feel like one of those shows, though, because I find those shows super pretentious. And, like, I feel like a lot of the people that are, like, renting out in those shows, I feel like they're, like, just not aware of, like, their surroundings or society or anything. They seem, like, kind of self-centered. But th I... that's not how this feels. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've made this joke so many times. My wife is totally sick about it, but you're a fresh ear, so I'm going to say it to you. Um, there's a South Park episode that actually makes fun of that entire like televised renovation genre, and it's literally just Randy and his wife going on. They're doing a renovation show, and it's called White People Flipping Houses. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. Yeah, in every single episode, it's always, okay, we're going to go ahead and go in and we're just going to knock down this wall. We're going to make it a nice open concept. Maybe put up some <laughs> shiplap over here. Every single house without yeah. fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. same compilation of just like knocking down all the walls and everything. It is, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, way too long I've been talking about that. Also, a sentence backwards I just said. Congratulations. Can you tell I've been basically just communicating in Japanese lately and not English? Christ. <laughs> Speaking of commentary on your uh, ability to speak Japanese, let's move on to listener mail. Yes, moving on to the listener mail. <laughs> so I have a request for you, dear listeners. We are moving into probably slow news season with December and January on the horizon. We got lots of things planned for us doing you know an end of the year show a beginning of the year show we're going to do predictions predictions and stuff like that but mm -hmm. just in case we need some content which means we need some emails if you have been thinking about emailing us in or you haven't emailed in yet you should just write that email even if you're like oh i want to write them but I, you know this question i have kind of sucks or whatever just write it in i'll tell you if it sucks okay let me be the judge <laughs> I, I will be the, the censor to Oni. <laughs> Impossible. Yeah. So please write us in at nintendoeverythingpod at gmail.com. That email one more time is nintendoeverythingpod at gmail.com. Write us in your life advice questions, questions about video games, poetry. Draw us a map to the treasure. Where is the One Piece? Where? And send it into that email. I... <laughs> Come on, Galen. I, 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 you, you lost me on the One Piece bit. I was just like, uh, no. <laughs> so we might be doing some email-heavy episodes in the near future, but it depends on you. Yeah. <laughs> and as you write those emails in, they may sound a little something like this. So, this week we actually have two emails we're going to read out. First one is from Jay. Hey Jay, how's it going? What up Jay? Good to hear from you again. Yeah, yeah. Jay writes in, hello again. How are you guys doing? We're fine. Thank you very much. Better than fine, Jay. Better than fine. <laughs> Just wanted to comment a bit on the last episode I heard. First off, Galen. You mentioned Mega Man Battle Network. I, I believe I did. You want to talk about Mega Man Battle Network? Let's talk about Mega Man Battle Network. What else is new? The Mega Man Battle Network. Have I talked about Mega Man Battle Network? I really like Mega Man Battle Network. <laughs> the Battle Network and D&D &D are like the two main things he lives for. It, you know what? I can't argue about that. I, if I had those two things, I'd be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I also love those games. And the fact that Capcom released the Mega Man ZX collection makes me pretty hopeful that a Battle Network collect or for a Battle Network collection. I would buy that in a heartbeat, and I feel like it would be easier to port them uh, than some of the dual screen Mega Man ZX games. Um, I would agree with you. I and also because they are Game Boy Advance games, I feel like you'd be able to fit a lot more of those games into a collection package. Yeah, I think this would be a pretty easy a very easy thing for Capcom to kind of push out, you know, just kind of on the side. Like, you know how 
they did that uh Phoenix Wright collection. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I could very easily see them doing something like that in the same vein. Mm. And they've kind of been subtly using Mega Man. Like I know that they just recently did on it was Dragalia Lost. They actually have a Mega Man centric event mm-hmm. that they have going on. And for a mobile game, which is weird, but <laughs> hey, I'm okay with it. Uh, I, I really want them to do something more with that character, but you know, I'd be happy with them just bringing back some of these old older classics. Yeah, yeah, just build up the 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 public awareness of Mega Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so moving on, uh, a little while ago we actually asked uh, for some of your favorite memories of the show and things like that, which Jay went ahead and responded to. To answer one of your guys' questions, one of my favorite memories of the show was when you had your significant others on. I can't remember which episodes they were, but it was really cool having them on, and I enjoyed the conversation. Thanks very much for that, Jay. Uh, Thank I you. personally really enjoyed both of them being on here. Like, uh, I, I loved I loved having Mary on and talking about Animal Crossing with the three of us, and... Uh, Kind of getting it on both sides when it came to how badly my jokes were landing. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It, it's it's always fun to be have multiple people try to put you in your place. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to be having Marion in the near future, too, with Animal Crossing releasing in March. Yeah, yeah. And also, I really enjoyed having Cri- uh, Chris. Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Chris! <laughs> Cliff. <laughs> you called him Criff. Why is your English worse than mine this episode? I need you to be bigger in your A-game, okay? Uh, I really enjoyed having Cliff come on. Uh, kind of in the same vein. Like, it, it was it was kind of nice to call out Oni on some of his stuff. <laughs> I don't even remember any of that. It was, it was fun. He should come on for an episode. I'm sure he'll show up at some point. In the meantime, though, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can listen to us talking there. Mm-hmm. Game Married. Uh-huh. G- G-A-Y-M-E. <laughs> so, rounding off Jay's email, the other question was why we enjoy games. For me, it's my favorite version of storytelling. There's nothing quite like it in the media. It's by far the most immersive way to experience a story. This is also part of the reason I don't enjoy competitive multiplayer or looter type games because they usually there usually isn't much story involved. Thanks again for reading my mail. Talk to you soon. Thanks for writing in, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. Jay, you and I are the same when it comes to the medium of video games for storytelling. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Like, I'm not gonna say that like it's the best way of telling a story or something, but it's definitely a super unique an immersive way to experience a story. It makes me think about like Final Fantasy VI and the way that you bounce around between characters. Just like experiencing a story like Final Fantasy VI in say a TV show would be slightly different because of mm-hmm. the way that the events are portrayed towards you, the player, to empathize with the characters. You just, you can do it such, I don't know if a better way or more efficient way is the right way of saying it but it just wouldn't have impacted me as much if it were a TV show versus me playing the video game with Final Fantasy VI. And this is the very reason that I love to critique media. I just love Mm -hmm. critiquing storytelling. Well, and on top of that, I mean, I am a firm believer that video games are a very young uh, outlet of media and storytelling expression. Like, Yeah, I mean, compared to like books, TV, and movies, for sure. Yeah, exactly. But it... People are still finding new and exciting avenues as to how to express themselves and to tell a story in this format, and we've only scratched the surface. Like, I'm I'm right with you here, Jay. There there's no other way that I can think of that you can really appeal to a person when you that person is physically controlling the character's actions that the story is happening to. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. As far as, like, how or why people enjoy games, I mean, everybody, of course, is definitely different on this one. Uh, I think I mentioned beforehand, there's, you know, the people sometimes play for that sense of 
autonomy and just wanting to have control over their actions in a game and have those actions actually impact. Uh, some people love just to relax and just have a story told and to experience all of it. And then some people who like competitive multiplayer games are looking for a sense of mastery and completion of something. Yeah, I mean, I play video games for all different kinds of reasons. The majority of it being like I enjoy RPG systems and I enjoy the storytelling and characters, but I also like to play from time to time a good side-scrolling beat 'em up or side-scrolling Metrovania, something like that, a platformer, just because mm-hmm. I enjoy those like sort of older classics of, you know, making that that sort of brain connection of I jump here and I shoot the enemy and I collect this and I mark this off my checklist and that kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. So again, thank you so much for writing in, Jay, and we look Mm -hmm. forward to hearing from you again in the near future. Absolutely. Thanks again, Jay. But Jay is not the only one to write us in an email this week. That's correct. We also... (laughs) I don't know where that came from. I don't know. (laughs) We also have another email from Mr. Bungle. Mr. Bungle. Hi, Mr. Bungle. (laughs) Mr. Bungle writes in... Hello, Oni and Galen. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? How's the weather out there? <laughs> in Bungaland. In Bungaland. <laughs> Do you think Mr. Bungle lives in a bungalow? Only if it is large enough for him and Mrs. Bungle. Or Mr. Bungle. No, Mr. Bungle is his father. No. Or <laughs> gender nonconforming Bungle. Or non binary Bungle. Non binary Bungle. Yeah. <laughs> Is that name taken as, like, a username somewhere? (laughs) It is now. (laughs) So, he writes in, One of my favorite aspects of the show is Oni's knowledge of Japanese. Specifically, the Japanese language and culture. I am learning Japanese, and I just came across the word warui, which translates roughly to bad. This made me think that Waluigi is a pun on the words warui and Luigi. After all, since Mario has Wario, then shouldn't Luigi have Luigi? Uh, <laughs> so, what do you think, Oni? Thank you both for all the entertainment. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Bungle. Thank you, Mr. Bungle. Thank you for being a listener. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to provide the entertainment. So it is thanks to you. Mm-hmm. But I do love Luigi. <laughs> Luigi. I need I need like a sassy <laughs> side character named Luigi. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the evil version of Daisy? No, you know, I've thought about, like, what could be Daisy's evil side, and I I can't come up with a name just yet. Mm. But you are absolutely right, Mr. Bungle, Mr. Bunguru. Waluigi's name does come from Warui. So before we get into Waluigi, I wanted to mention how Mario and Wario, they have that name because I think it was just because the M is an upside down. Wait. Because the mm-hmm. W is an upside down M, and that was kind of it. But then, sort of coincidentally, they decided to do another W thing for Luigi, and Luigi in Japanese is pronounced Duigi, which is really similar. But it has Dui in front of, in the very beginning of it. So Dui is also a part of Warui, and as you pointed out, Warui is uh, bad, so it means bad Luigi. So Waruiji, it's it's just like rolling two words together. In Japanese, they always do a lot of wordplay, like even more so than I think in English. So that's where that Japanese sense of that name comes from. But it just kind of sort of worked in English too to say Wa Luigi because of Wa Rio, and it was sort of I think coincidental that it all just kind of worked together like that. But then that also makes me wonder, like, where do they go in the future with like? Peach, right? We've heard of Waru Peachy before in the, from Japan. Uh, that would I don't know what they would call that in English, like Walu Peach or Wa Peach. I don't know. They'd have to think of something different. Hmm. I I still want them I want an origin story for both of them. Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily want like an origin story, but I would love to have the Super Wario Brothers game where it's Waluigi, Wario, Waru Peachy. And like a maybe a Daisy, whatever. What are they? What Daisy? I don't know. I feel like her. What Daisy? That sounds. I don't know. That sounds like something you catch. <laughs> That's something that you would catch from Wario. 
And then maybe it could be cleaned up by garlic, cleaned, cleared up by garlic. I'm I'm just imagining Daisy with uh Wal- Wario or Waluigi's mustache now. And then the big bulbous nose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> She'd I She'd be like, "Wow, I'm Daisy." <laughs> <laughs> Please make that happen. Please. <laughs> but her name, what would her name be? Like it would have to be something flower related like there has to be you'd have to like have a good knowledge of flowers but like a a flower that sort of has a w in it or something like that Hmm. i did just make this realization though there's a good chance that wario and waluigi are actually clones which is why they are so similar because if you think about it i have never seen baby wario and baby waluigi haven't they been in something yes they have where have you seen baby versions of them? Haven't they? I feel like they were in like that mobile game. I can't think of any. Yeah, yeah. Baby... Oh, I know exactly where. They were from the Yoshi's Island DS game. What? Okay. <laughs> what? I'll stand corrected then. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you are a Waluigi. Maybe you're so Wadui. Uh, that's why uh that's why they're coming after me that's the that's a real reason game freak is coming after me oh you know what now i'm looking at a picture of baby waluigi gross by the way uh but you know his name (laughs) or his hat has the l on it but it's upside down because of you know m is the upside down w and or whatever uh so for peach it would have to be something that was like upside down p if it's an upside down p then it's a b it's a b or a d a b or a d but i'm gonna say it's a b and her name should just be called beach (laughs) <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm now just imagining her being super super sassy but an upside down d is kind of like the same thing like for daisy maybe the evil one their names are just peach and daisy but like opposite <laughs> because b's and d's and p's this sucks mm-hmm. what am i talking about <laughs> we've gone too far down <laughs> i would also love to see like birdo happening a little bit more in Mario games, you know? I wish they have, you know, some decent characters. I wish that they would introduce a couple new characters, like a brother to Bowser, or like a family member of Bowser's, you know? Uh, maybe on the evil side, but I mean, the the last character that we've actually received was Rosalina. And I think overall, like, she was not received too well. What are you talking about? Rosalina is like a super beloved character. Really? Yeah. Like, I've I've always been very lukewarm to her. She was just like, oh, and she's here. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, that's your that, that's you in your, in your echo chamber there. Like, Rosalina has <laughs> been, like, hugely uh, well accepted. Especially in, like, I remember when Mario Kart 8 first came out on the Wii, uh, Wii U. Her poses and her, her suit for riding the motorcycle, their motorcycle suit. It was like, mm-hmm. damn, she looks fine. And everybody loved her. And everybody's like, oh. Her hair is covering one eye. Mysterious, sexy. There, Who is there she? was a, <laughs> there was also the one guy when the Rosalina Amiibo came out. He was in the UK who literally bought every single one that he could. He spent like tens of thousands of dollars just in order to get every single one because he dollars dislike the character. Uh, UK dollars. UK <laughs> <Euros>. dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god he spent <laughs> tens of thousands of pence over there yeah, yeah. they use yen right mm-hmm. mm. <laughs> japanese yen that is what they use in the uk yep absolutely so anyway thanks for this rant mr bungle thank you very much for <laughs> writing into us you are absolutely right about warui and luigi and Good luck studying Japanese. Japanese is a rough language. I mean, learning Mm -hmm. languages is rough in general, but do your absolute best. There's going to be times where you're like, oh my God, it's so rough, but just take a breather, step away from it, get right back on the horse. You can do it. Yeah. Gambatte ne. You can do it. (laughs) You know how to say gambatte, so why wouldn't you say gambatte ne? Because I didn't want to take that opportunity away from you. Oh, oh, I'm just so gracious. Arigato. Oh, shut up. <laughs> oh, you shut up right now. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me.
Let's -a go. Making my walk downtown, walking fast, faces past, and I'm homebound. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> so what's coming up? What's coming out on NintendoEverything.com? We have all of your sales information, all your sales needs all over the website. We got information on Bandai Namco's sales, Warner Bros, Capcom, Atlas, Sega, everything. Check out our site, including the physical sales too, where you can get all your physical boxes. I, I, do, I do like myself some physical boxes. Physical boxes. <laughs> we also have an interview coming up that I performed regarding Warriors Orochi 4 Ultimate. Mm -hmm. We also got interviews that I performed for Darksiders Genesis coming up. And of course, so much more. You want to stay connected to us on Twitter. That's at Nin Everything. And check out our YouTube for gameplay. That is youtube.com slash Nin Everything. And then again, you can chat with Galen and I on the Twitters. My Twitter is at Oni underscore Dino. My Instagram is Oni underscore underscore Dino. And my YouTube is Game Married. <laughs> We're going to have more Luigi's Mansion coming up on Game Married very soon. And a couple other things that are maybe happening in the future. I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Good. 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 But you'll want to go to our YouTube and subscribe. Yeah. As for me, I've got my Twitter uh, at Mobius087. And then there's also my Instagram, as I mentioned before, at... No, it's not at. It's true underscore Mobius for the Twitter. Or not the Twitter. Instagram. Wow. Where's my head now? <laughs> did you eat a bunch of turkey before we did this? I wish. I really wish I could use that as an excuse, but I didn't. <laughs> like, where's your energy? Th this is just where i'm at right now <laughs> what world what a world what world <laughs> oh god i would like to see a a, a walu toad though that's what i would really like to see a uh, toad with a giant mustache <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's what we need. That's what we need in life. Honestly, the world would be... That would solve world peace. I would love for them to be a new Wario land. Not WarioWare, specifically Wario Land. Uh -huh. The adventure is... Something happens where Wario's essence gets spread to absolutely everybody in the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh, yeah. That would be great. So you have Wario Piranha Plants. You have Wario Goombas. You have Wario Bowser. Yeah, that's and a then, great idea. There's your Wario Peach. There's your Wario Daisy. And Wario Bowser's name would be Wowzer. Wowzer! <laughs> Wah! No, it'd be like, Wah! <laughs> there you go. That's it. <laughs> it's like a little bit of W and a little bit of like deep throat voice. Uh, what kind of voice was that, Galen? <laughs> no, you... That's more Scooby-Doo, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> mind. The folks at home got the joke. It's fine. <laughs> Galen, when you re-listen to this episode, you will understand what I was talking about. Oh, I know exactly what you were talking about. That's why... That's what we call No, a no, no. That, don't even <laughs> pretend like you knew. Galen did not know. I know exactly when you're oblivious and you're trying to fake it. Listen, my own personal water gates aside. <laughs> yes, good reference. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Wasn't funny. But I felt like it was appreciated. <laughs> I, I will take the participation of trophy in that one. <laughs> I don't hand them out. Never. I don't hand out Onis. Onis are not participation trophies. Uh, can we start handing out Onis next episode? <laughs> No, because we're going to talk about the Game Awards next episode. So everybody should st tune in. <laughs> should tune in uh, next week because we're going to have a big old Game Awards uh, bonanza. And then probably mm -hmm. the week after that, that's when we'll do our awards show. I don't know. Nice. Maybe the week after that. Send in requests. Not requests. Suggestions. Mm -hmm. So check us out next week. Of course, Nintendo Everything Podcast every week. And for everything Nintendo. Stay tuned to Nintendo Everything. 
<laughs> hey, that was really good. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm gonna win. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>